Hello, fungi friends. I just got back from Mendocino, where I spent a couple of days going mushroom hunting, and I found a whole bunch of really cool mushrooms. So I'm going to take a few minutes here to run you guys through what's on the board, talk about each individual species that I found, give you a couple of notes on edibility, ecology, that kind of thing, and then i got to start cooking and cleaning these mushrooms because I need to go to bed but I have a huge pile of these things just waiting for, uh, for you guys because I want to show you everything I have. So down in front is this line of stuff and towards the back, all the big bolites and the porcini. So let's start with what's in front. Uh, these are Cantharellus formosus, the Pacific Golden Chanterelle. So these are delicious edible mushrooms. Uh, they have, I'm trying to look for a, a good sample to show you guys sort of the defining features, but chanterelles uh, have white flesh inside. It'll slowly turn a little yellowy after you cut it, but they have decurrent ridges. So instead of having true gills, they have more like ridges. You can't really bend or break them with your finger. They have white spores, so white spore print. You won't see it on paper like this. And uh, the sol solid meaty texture, decurrent gills, white spore print, uh, tells you that this is a chanterelle, true cantharellus. So these are mycorrhizal with dug fur, and you find these all over the uh, the coast and anywhere from fall to winter. Um, then we have a different kind of chanterelle. It's a different species. This one tends to associate a little bit more with, it seems like, pine and tan oak, maybe, whereas I find cantharellus formosus under dug fur. Uh, but this one is white on top, so not as yellow. This is the Golden Pacific. This is the white chanterelle. It does stain a little kind of yellowy golden, um, but it has much paler underside as well. It also has these decurrent gills and a white spore print. So these are both excellent edible mushrooms. Um, this is Cantharellus subalpinus, and this is Cantharellus formosus. So those are the two species I've been finding out on the coast right now. Um, these are some of my absolute favorites. The white chanterelles, I think, have the best like texture really of any mushroom, uh, at least of all the chanterelles that I've had. So this is a, a tiny little Amanita egg. This isn't edible, but it's a cool thing to see the, uh, the sort of unopened Amanita, and it'll eventually open up. So I'm going to try time-lapsing this. I think that'll be kind of interesting. Uh, we have another Amanita. This is Amanita calyptroderma. This is an edible Amanita. And the way you can tell that is by looking at the striations on the edge of the cap. I had a very thick white uh, membrane on top that I peeled off. It has a hollow stipe inside. It does not have a bulbous bottom. And it has kind of cream-colored gills. So all those things tell me this is a Kokora, an edible one, and not like a death cap and uh, toxic Amanita. But I wouldn't recommend anyone who's not an expert ever even like pick Amanita and worry about them. It's great to just look at them, but just leave them be. Um, we're going to keep going around kind of, this is clockwise. So here's a nice big lobster mushroom. This is a uh, base species of Rusla, usually Rusla brevipes, a big white boring mushroom. Gets colonized by Hypomyces lactiflorum, this crazy sort of orangey red uh, mold. So it's actually a Basidiomycete mushroom getting colonized by an Ascomycete uh, mold. And it turns the uh, sort of boring white mushroom into a more exciting lobster mushroom. It takes on this great color. You see the gills are gone. It's actually been replaced by these mold uh, that colonizes the whole surface of the mushroom. Makes it much more dense and chunky. Kind of hear nice, nice taps on that thing. Um, so as we go around, we get into the porcini, the bolites. So here is a king bolete, Boletus edulis var grand edulis. So this is uh, one of the best edible mushrooms in the world. It's really phenomenal texture. This is a little bit of bug damage. So I gotta get cooking on these, make sure the bugs don't get any more. I want them. Uh, but this is growing with pine here in California, Monterey or Bishop pine. Uh, we had rain about two, three weeks ago. And so these have come up now once the rain has had a chance to soak into the soil. And there's a lot of moisture from the fog drip on the coast. So you find these in sort of grassy pine areas on the coast. Um, out there, there is also the queen bolete. So this is different than the king bolete. Uh, it's, they're very similar texturally and flavor-wise, but the queen bolete has a darker brown or cap, and this one is growing under tan oak, whereas this is with pine. So this is mycorrhizal with bishop and monterey pine. This is mycorrhizal with tan oak. 
So often you'll find them interspersed, depending on the habitat you're in, but those are kind of the contextual clues you need. Um, here is what's called a scaver stalk, or a lexinum. These are very, very solid mushrooms, um, and they're defined by these little black uh, scabers, little bits on the stipe here. Uh, I'm not totally sure what mycorrhizal, you know, these are with. They they were near tan oak, they were near uh, madrone, they were near some manzanita. Um, they're pretty decent edibles, but I cook these very very well. There is a history of some people getting sick from eating these uh, in North America, but in Eastern Europe they absolutely love them, and I think it had a lot of it has to do with how long you cook them for. So I'll cook these for solid like 20, 30 minutes in a <coughs> sorry in a pan, and then I'll cook them even more later when I go to cook them with other stuff. Uh, but I like Lexinum, a very crisp, crunchy texture. Uh, here's a Boletus smithii. So this is a cool one. It has this very sort of like suede-like top and white stipe that fades this beautiful red and then yellow. Um, pores will stain slightly blue if you mess around with them. Um, this one's interesting. This is, I think this is a Bookwaldo Boletus. So this is actually a saprobic bolete. And when I first cut it, it turned very blue, but it has yellow flesh, turns blue quickly. And now it's looking kind of orangey. Eat. This is edible. Um, I find this in like the pine duff on the coast. So it's not actually mycorrhizal, it seems to be saprobic. Uh, this is a little suillus. There's tons and tons of suillus out on the coast right now. Sometimes we call them slippery jacks. I met a woman today who was calling them uh, honey bolites. But they have yellow pores, yellow angled pores. They tend to be very, very slippery. They're okay edibles, but I have so many other better edibles that I didn't bother taking many of these. Um, here's a zero camellus, or what's called a red cracking bolete. Sorry, my cat is not super happy with me. I was away for a couple of days mushroom hunting, and she wants attention. But red cracking bolete, because it cracks on top. It's got kind of uh, yellow pores. It's got a little bit of like reddish, purpley stuff on the stipe. Um, there's lots of different species of zero camellus, but they're easily recognized by kind of the cracking on top, the yellow pores. Um, little like sort of coloration on the stem and then the mycelium also is usually orange so there's a, a good survey of all the stuff that's in front of you um, I also found this bully I'm pretty sure this is not an edible one I don't totally know the species but I think it's something like a neo neo boletus luteformis or something in that group um, it's got red pores I don't think this one's toxic but I also wouldn't eat it so in general good advice is to just avoid uh, red pored boletes don't eat red pored boletes um, there is a good edible one on the East Coast, but we don't get that here on the West Coast. Um, there's also the spy mushroom. So this is a Clotospi species, and this is a good indicator species for the king boletes that are back there. Um, I found this is a weird little nascent young uh, Turbinalis flaccosus, the, uh, the woolly chanterelle, but when they're young, they have these sort of weird little, like, almost looks like a little ogre ear kind of thing, which is fun. And I found this. Um, weird truffle like thing so if I open this up uh, this is this is this is bizarre it's gonna be kind of like gray and look like floral foam on the inside see that you guys hear that weird rip Ooh. so yeah this is kind of a truffle like uh, thing I'm totally spacing on the name of it right now but it's mycorrhizal, they were obviously all over the place. But that's pretty weird. It smells it smells kind of funky too. Um, great thing to do when you're learning mushrooms is to smell mushrooms, touch mushrooms, uh, feel mushrooms, pick them up. There's really no mushroom you can touch that's gonna harm you. Uh, your hands are gonna get dirty, but that's okay. You can wash them later. Once you get to touch and handle and feel these mushrooms, you really get a sense for how they're different. Uh, and I also like to kind of give them a little tap, and that tells me talks to me about the density of the mushroom, kind of how they sound. So this this is an amnita tap. It's very solid. Uh, here's this little red bolete. This is also very solid. If we take a bigger bolete, like this lexinum, you get a nice deeper reverb on it. If we took a younger specimen, though, it's still very dense. Uh, and that's because these are preformed mushrooms or determinate mushrooms. So the small version of a mushroom um, let's see, let's look for two king boletes. So here's a very small king bolete button. This button has as many cells as like this bigger button. It's just the cells have gotten larger. So this is this is more dense, this is less dense. And then when they get really big and mature, 
uh, like this, like this bad boy right here. It's a sort of big hollow noise. So these little fresh guys are really good to cook up in a pan. Big ones like this, I'm going to dry this out and powder it and turn that into a seasoning. So that's uh, that's what I'm working with on the board here. Uh, you guys can kind of hang out and watch me work as I go along here. Uh, I need to very quickly <laughs> start cooking, sauteing, and uh, just overall processing some of these mushrooms. And I don't have a ton of room to work, so I'm just going to be doing some stuff off screen. But uh, feel free to keep looking at these at these gorgeous mushrooms. Once I get a pan set, I'll take you over and you can take a look at the mushrooms. But okay. You know what? I'm going to do the cooking off camera. I'll save that for later. But I just wanted to give you guys this really nice tour of all these gorgeous mushrooms. So you all have a, a visual on what this looks like, right? We have those beautiful golden chanterelles. Sorry. Golden chanterelles are there. And the beautiful white chanterelles. Again, these have some of my favorite texture, flavor of any chanterelle. This awesome chunky lobster mushroom. There goes my cat. Yeah, you're on camera, Tiger Paw. Uh, so there's there's high <laughs> Mice's lactiflorum, lobster mushroom, really dense, delicious mushroom. And all these big, beautiful porcini bolites. Some big ones, some younger ones, nice little button like that. Um, but some of these have a fairly significant amount of bug ingress. This one's actually pretty good, um, but like this one, whoops. So I gotta I gotta cook these up or dry them up so I don't let them go to waste. Um, but yeah, here's a whole mess of king bolites. There's a couple of the queen queen bolites. I gave away some of the better ones. A couple of these good lexinums, the scaber stalks. And there's a few other sort of random bolites and other things I wanted to. To sample and, and show you guys some of the, the cool diversity that was out there. So here's my Mendocino mushroom haul. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and uh, if you have excess questions just feel free to pop them in the comments or uh, send me an email fastenbyfungi at gmail.com. If you want to learn more from me I have a podcast Fasten by Fungi is on Spotify, Apple, Colin, Google, etc. Uh, please follow me on all the different socials. I've got uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all these things. If you want to support me, I also have a Patreon and merch on the website. So anyhow, it's been uh, fun hanging out with you guys. And thank you for being fascinated by fungi with me. Hopefully you learned something and uh, you get a chance to go out and find some of your own mushrooms this fall. Uh, so sending you all much love. Have a good one.